Hey, how's it going there, folks and Toonsters, and welcome to another ADHD video. So for today, we're going to talk about the ADHD evaluation process, that nasty little thing that a lot of people seem to have quite a bit of difficulty or complaints about. I myself am a counselor, and I have a lot of colleagues who are pretty decent or good at their job and I also have a lot of colleagues who don't know what the fuck they're doing they have no business being in this profession so with that being said of course um, some of you probably have already run into some people or some psychiatrists who don't know what they're talking about who perhaps have an agenda against those of us with ADHD and don't want to give you medication or they just flat out just don't care they're jaded so I got seven major points that we're going to discuss today it should be a quick little video with a couple of points that should be helpful to you and hopefully somebody you know so down below in the link section you'll see a link to a pdf of all the points we're going to talk about here that way for some of you who need to print it out or want to download it and keep it on file to help you out when you go to your adhd evaluation that way you can look at some of these points and help you out in the process it's all about helping out in the ADHD community. I myself had to go through this a couple of years back and I didn't know a damn thing. I had to go through trial and error. And the thing about yours truly, old Wilhelm over here, is I am, uh, yeah, I don't take no for an answer from nobody. If I need to get something, I'm going to fucking get what I need to get. That has to do a lot with my Enneagram number, which... Um, you will see there's going to be a series of. You heard it here first ADHD in the Enneagram series I'm gonna do it I've been reading a lot more of it and I feel this time around it's gonna be some help so anyway folks before we jump into the main points for today for this ADHD evaluation process I want to talk about a couple of pre points just two. it's not gonna take long pre point number one this video is assuming that you have health insurance and if you don't have health insurance get some especially if you're here in the u.s it's gonna get mighty difficult to do this unless you have health insurance point number two these points are for those who want to get treatment all right now that we've got that out of the way let's move to the main points so main point point number one set up an appointment with your doctor slash healthcare specialist to get a referral to a psychiatrist to get evaluated for adhd set reminders this might take a few days, weeks, or months. Do not get discouraged. To set up an appointment with a doctor, your healthcare professional can take forever. Depends on the hospital you're with, depends on your doctor, the quality of the hospital, and all this other crap. So, if it takes a while, don't get discouraged. Just try to get a referral from your general doctor. But, if that doesn't work, there's something else we can do. Moving on now. To step number two. Contact the psychiatrist slash healthcare professional your doctor is referring you to. Note, some people can skip step one and go straight to step two, this step. Set up an appointment at the soonest convenience. Put that on your calendar slash reminders. Now, Relating back to points one and two, some people, they don't need to go to their doctor or their healthcare professional to get appointments set up with a psychiatrist or whoever's going to be evaluating them. Some people can just call the psychiatrist straight away and set up an appointment with them. But if you have the type of insurance, like people here in the U.S. do, where your insurance is with a hospital like Kaiser or something like that, Kaiser Permanente, or other health insurance companies, then most of the time, it's going to be all within that agency. They kind of handle everything themselves. They're like the Apple company. That they want you to do everything with them, and they don't want no third-party company and all this other stuff. So if you have a case like that, odds are you're going to have to get an evaluation from your doctor, and your doctor is going to get a referral to your psychiatrist. And this is what we're talking about in step two. So with this step two... Once you contact the healthcare professional psychiatrist to set up an appointment at your soonest convenience and theirs and put that sucker on your calendar and put some reminders of it because those of us with ADHD, 
Got a lot of issues of short-term memory and all that other schnoz. So, moving on now to step number three. You might get referred to a lower tier psychologist slash counselor first. Who is generally going to screen you to see whether ADHD is the case or whether you're just trying to score a stimulant medication. And if you're one of those dumbasses who's trying to score a stimulant medication, I hope you get caught and suffer. It's because of people like you, that very innocent people who want to get help for the ADHD and get treatment have a hard time because of jackasses that want to score a stimulant medication just to get their fix. So, when you go see the psychologist or counselor, most of the time they might not have a clue about ADHD. It's really not uncommon. Working with the mental health professionals I've worked with and colleagues and other people I've seen in my profession, you'd be surprised how many counselors, psychologists, and therapists have no idea what the hell they're doing and are very ignorant about different conditions. In this case, ADHD. So, be honest with the psychologist or counselor here in step three about your difficulties with ADHD. Don't underplay it. Don't overplay it. Try to be as honest as you can. And after that's done, after that meeting is done, they're going to hit you back up. Moving on now to step four. A few hours, days, weeks, months later, you'll be getting a call back or email, however the hell they contact you, from the psychologist or a secretary letting you know if you'll be getting an appointment with the psychiatrist and when the date shall be. Granted, some people might not get a call back, meaning that the psychologist or counselor might feel that you don't have ADHD and you're just trying to score medication. Granted, they're going to let you know that the day of the meeting. They're not going to just leave you hanging and be like, we'll call you. We'll call you when we're going to set up an appointment. They just don't call you. But working with the mental health professionals I've worked with, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if they didn't call you back or if they forgot. So you might need to call them back, unfortunately. Sometimes hospitals and places are busy and have a lot of people. And unfortunately, sometimes the secretary is a dumbass and just forgot to do something. So it varies and sometimes we unfortunately have to um, really kind of go out there for ourselves and really try to make the effort, unfortunately, because other people can't seem to you know, get the memo. But as is life and you got to do what you got to do. Next point, really important, point five. Before the date of the appointment with the psychiatrist arrives, do the following. Number one. Get really familiar with ADHD and your ADHD symptoms. You're going to get questioned a lot about them. and They're going to see if you're trying to BS or not. So you better know your ADHD symptoms really good. Point two for number five. Research what type of ADHD medication goes best with the type of ADHD you have slash your lifestyle. Not all types of stimulant medication or non-stimulant medication goes with different people. Because our ADHD and our biochemistry is all really unique, so you're going to have to do some research. And there's different types of medication. Which one are you going to take? Sub point number three for major point number five. What's the dosage amount you're thinking of getting? You're thinking of getting a low dosage? 5 milligrams, 10 milligrams, 20 milligrams, maybe an upper dosage, 50 milligrams and up? From what research has shown, depending on how severe your ADHD is, that's going to sort of dictate how much dosage you're going to take. Now granted, most ethical psychiatrists, if they agree to give you treatment for ADHD and you get evaluated, they're going to start you on the lowest dose of a stimulant medication and work their way up. That's generally the safe way. So if you start on stimulant medication, they might start you on 5 milligrams, or they might start you in 10. You need to be honest with the psychiatrist about how you feel about that and how comfortable you are. It's recommended, though, to start at the lowest dosage for your safety. So point number four for main point number five, is the medication going to be instant release or is it going to be extended release? Instant release stimulant medication, generally speaking, is going to be released almost immediately when you take the medication or within the first couple of minutes or an hour. 
Extended release medication is going to be spread out throughout the body and brain, so to speak, through a different number of hours. Usually people think that instant release is six hours. Extended release is thought to be 12 hours. This greatly varies from company to company that manufactures the medication and also greatly varies from individual. So just because something says it's going to last 12 hours, it doesn't mean it's going to last 12 hours. Same thing with the instant release. It might last less for some people. And in a rare case for some people, it might last more. It varies from person to person. So point number five for main point number five type of medication you're going to take. Is it going to be stimulant or non-stimulant medication? There are many different types of medications out there for ADHD these days. They're not all stimulant medication. So I recommend to look on websites like Health Unlocked and just see on the different forums what the parents are talking that they give to their kids, what you can do, what's maybe an option for you. You can Google stuff. You can watch some of my videos. There's a lot of different options out there of what you can do. So point number six, for main point number five, would you consider supplements? And if so, which ones? I myself take a really low dose stimulant medication along with supplements. Because stimulant medication only works with dopamine and norepinephrine. Research has shown that ADHD has difficulty with multiple neurotransmitters besides dopamine and norepinephrine. So by taking supplements, what I do is I make sure to compensate for those lack of lacking neurotransmitters. The other ones like serotonin, acetylcholine, B12, and stuff of that nature. If you're interested in supplement intake and what supplements help out for ADHD, I have a link up above of the supplements that I take for my ADHD. You should check it out. And for those who want to create their own supplement plan and perhaps are unsure about how to go about it, I have a link up above where you can see a video of me discussing how to create a supplement plan and which neurotransmitters are affected, which neurotransmit neurotransmitters need to be addressed, and what we can do. It's quite a lengthy video, but it's got a lot of helpful information. All the chapters are up. So you don't have to watch it all at once. There should be a link above if you want to check that out. Supplements are a great addition to an ADHD regimen. Whether you're taking stimulant medication or not, it's still really helpful to take supplements. I myself take a low dose stimulant medication along with supplements as mentioned in order to help out the side effects of stimulant medication to eliminate them and also to address ADHD fully not just dopamine nor epinephrine, but to address the other neurotransmitters and physiological difficulties that people with ADHD have. So point number seven for main point number five, become familiar with symptoms of dysthymia, anxiety, and depression. Those are generally comorbid with ADHD. And lots of psychiatrists seem to think the client has one of these conditions as opposed to actual ADHD. Unfortunately, lots of people going in for an ADHD evaluation get mistakenly diagnosed with dysthymia, general anxiety disorder, or depression. So some psychiatrists, they're going to be really pushy to want to push that onto you. That's what was done to me in one of the hospitals I was at beforehand. And I just kept telling this person no, but they just wouldn't listen. So I had to get really affirmative and let them know that Hey, I've had trouble with ADHD my whole life. I'm, this is not being made up. This is the difficulty I got. You either believe me or you don't. You have to be really firm with a lot of these psychiatrists. Just because they have a degree in something doesn't mean they know what the fuck they're doing. That's what it comes down to. I know plenty of people in my own profession, in counseling and in other careers, that did great in school, but they're not good at their actual job. In fact, they shouldn't be doing their actual job. So be aware of that. Some psychologists or some psychiatrists in this case are not going to know what they're doing and they might misdiagnose you and they might be on a tangent to continue with that misdiagnosing. Don't let them do that. Stand up for yourself. Stand up for your ADHD and tell them that you want an evaluation for your ADHD. 
don't let them walk all over you. Don't let them talk all over you. Because a lot of the time, unfortunately, you as the client are going to know more about ADHD than the psychiatrist you're going to see. Do not be surprised. Moving on to point number six, generally speaking, most psychiatrists will ask general questions regarding ADHD based on the DSM-5. That's the Diagnostic and Statistics Manual that myself and all other therapists, counselor, etc. around the U.S. all use. So they're going to use that book. And if they see you truly meet the criteria for ADHD, you get evaluated. If they doubt you or feel you're lying, you will not get the evaluation. The type of medication slash treatment offered is unique onto the psychiatrist slash agency. So some psychiatrists are going to give you that spiel that they don't believe in medication or, else, or some other bullshit. And uh, yeah, if that happens, just ask the agency you're working with to give you another psychiatrist because those people, generally speaking, are jaded or have some other kind of problem. Or they had a client that gave them a really bad experience and they just want to avoid anything with that, which I understand, but we have to know and understand that as mental health care professionals that people are different and we have to address people differently because that's the uniqueness of human nature. But as a client, as an ADHD client, you have the choice most of the time here in the U.S. to just get another psychiatrist if they don't want to give you, give you the evaluation. Because some psychiatrists, they're petty like that. They're just not going to give you the evaluation. So simply ask the agency or hospital you're working with to give you another one. And that moron that you were working with, yeah, you're not going to have to worry about them anymore. So moving on now to number seven. If you feel your psychiatrist does not give a shit, is a clueless moron, or has an agenda against people taking medication, as I mentioned, simply ask the agency you're working with to change your psychiatrist to someone else, or look for a psychiatrist elsewhere. Managing and getting treatment for your ADHD is the goal, is the end all be all in this instant. Keep fighting for yourself, keep doing what you gotta do. If it doesn't work out with one psychiatrist, go to the agency or hospital you're working with and just ask to see another psychiatrist. It's as simple as that. They'll set you up with another appointment and you go and do that. It might not work out if, and if it doesn't work out with that second one, it might not after all. Don't give up. Just keep looking. Remember, this is your life and this is your ADHD and you want to get it taken care of so you can start living the best life that you can. It's extremely important for ADHD to be managed. And we got to understand that there are different options of treatment. It doesn't have to be stimulant medication. It doesn't have to be supplements. It can be just you know different sorts of working out, perhaps counseling to manage your emotions and behaviors. But from what I've seen in research, just counseling alone is not enough for ADHD. Most research has indicated that those with ADHD, they need treatment. Like they need stimulant medication, medication and or supplements, and a combination of counseling sometimes especially if the life of the individual has been very difficult. Because at that point, you have a lot of bad habits and things that you need to break that you perhaps are unconscious about. So it's helpful to use the resources offered to you. Anyway, though, I hope this video was of some help, perhaps to you or somebody else you know watching. And hopefully you can get your ADHD evaluation and get a treatment that works for you so you can start improving the quality of your life and living the quality of life that you absolutely deserve. I wish you all the best, best regards. This is Wilhelm, your ADHD comrade, over and out.